Dr. Rahul Surup Sharma, who is assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering in the Albagh Educational Institute. He has been a visiting scientist at the Resnor Polytechnic Institute, USA, and also have been to Center of Metal Forming at Sofia Antipolis, France. <clears throat> His main research interests include bulk nanomaterials through severe plastic deformation, multi-scale modeling, intelligent manufacturing, and soft computing. He has incorporated the agility in forming industry and novel design philosophy that is based on intelligent knowledge based on the systems for enabling rapid redesigning of the existing production systems. I now request Dr. Rahul Surup Sharma to please present his talk. So, why we require light material? This is a metal stratohedron which shows processing, microstructure, properties and performance are totally interrelated. If you want to announce the performance, we have to announce the properties. If you want to announce the properties, we have to announce the, we have to fabricate the microstructure and for that we have to go for some kind of processing technique. So performance is related to microstructure. So why we require this kind of material? Because day by day the challenge is to make, to optimize the processes, to optimize the products, to scale down the size plus to get a lighter weight, lighter weight. So the application of this grain, uh, ultra, ultra fine grain material is in uh, defense applications and especially is in medical implants. In medical implants, they are manufactured by titanium. So if we are able to fabricate, if we are able to decrease the weight and increase the strength of these medical implants, it will be a great effort. So our research focus on this scale, at present we are in microns, the structure is in microns and we want to take it to decrease the grain size. So this is the classification of some materials, coarse grain metals, ultra fine and nano metals. So the, the material which we get in uh, ready made that is coarse grain material. So what we are in process, we are in process if we can decrease this, if we can bring it to ultra fine grain material. So by that what happens, so this is a graph which I have taken from the uh, literature that is from Langdon 2007 which shows that uh, two graphs for stress and strain are compared for coarse grain and ultra fine grain materials. So for UFG it can be seen that it has got higher yield stress, it has got higher yield stress. So where our work falls? So our main objective is to decrease that D, to decrease that D, D is basically the grain size. So we are not really working on the nano scale, we are working on bulk nanometrial means the, all the dimensions are not under nano size, but we are working at a microstructure if we can decrease that D, if that D can be brought out to some 100 nanometer, nanometers. So again the objective is to, this is the larger grain size, smaller grain size, if we can find the grain size. So there are two approaches for this, to decrease the, to reduce the grain size. So there are two approaches, one is top down approach, another approach is bottom up approach. So we are not falling under bottom up approach, we are only in top down approach. In top down approach, we have what number of techniques are over there, ultrasonic short pinning, ball drop test, air blast short pinning, ball mill, high pressure tension, uh, sliding wheel load, ECAS, and RCS. Again, <coughs> we are into severe plastic deformation only. That is high pressure torsion, E cap, and repetitive processings. So these are the different techniques in severe plastic deformation. They are one is uh, high pressure torsion. So in this, what is being taken? A, si a simple uh, sample is being taken, and <coughs> it is being provided a torsion between two dies. Then we have got repetitive co corrugation straightening and it is used for converting the grain material for sheet metal. One more FPD process is that is cyclic extrusion compression. Next one is multi axial forging, high pressure torsion already I discussed, ARB acumulate roll balding and this is for sheet metal that is rollers for uh, RC repetitive corrugation and straightening. 
next one is constraint group pressing and one more that is ARB. So, they all fall under SPD process, severe plastic deformation, ok. So, but our work falls under ECAP, ECAP stands for equal channel angular pressing. The main objective is, so this is a, it is a SPD process and this is the one of the best SPD process which I have discussed just now. So, this is the generic view of this SPD process. So, what happens the basic idea is to place a coarse grain material over here, press it through other channel. So, this is the shear zone. So, at the shear zone, high strain is because there is a turning angle of by 90 degree or some maybe some other angle it can be a, that is given by an angle of intersection. So, high deformation takes place at this place. So, at this place what happens immediately the strain is induced. So, when the strain is induced what happens it is hitting the microstructure. So, in this way what we can we can just by inducing the strain we can reduce the grain size. So, in this process the beauty of this process is this that we are getting the same blade, the cross section of the blade remains same. The cross section of the blade rem remains same, but what has achieved? We have achieved the higher strength and this again number of passes can be done. Number of passes can be done because this blade has come out, then again we can put it again, again the same process can be done over here, then again. So, number of passes can be done and over the time what happens? We can achieve a higher uh, lower grain size and lower grain size is basically that. So, uh, I forgot to discuss this one, uh, there is one relationship that is sigma y is considered sigma d root times d. So, our research area totally falls under this category that is a hall patch relationship. This is a hall patch relationship. The foundation of our work is on this equation only that is Hopatch relationship which shows that the yield strength is dependent on this is basically inverse square root law. If we can decrease the d, we can achieve a higher strength. So, in this case what we are, we are inducing very huge shear strain because immediate as it turns back immediate deformation is taking place. The basic object is to develop a metal forming process where high strains may be int introduced into metal blades by simple shear. This is what I just told you about that uh, hull patch relationship. So, what are the main advantages compared to other processes of top down approach? Like in other techniques, the main is multiple passes through ECAP is possible. The biggest advantage of this is can be conducted at room temperature, can process large bulk materials, ECAP process have, have significantly enhanced properties. So, I just discussed about that uh, repeated passes can be done pass one then we can go for pass 2 again that billet has gone again then again we are getting a refined microstructure then again third pass we can go for a third pass then again we can go for a fourth pass. Now, our research focus comes here where our research focus is how to optimize this process, how to get a best process among this which because this process depends on number of parameters. Num the number of parameters are you can see from here one is in angle of intersection, the other is outer arc angle, third process variable is uh, that is uh, velocity of pressing, these are the three. Then the fourth variable is the friction at interface of this uh, work piece and die. So, is our aim of the research is basically which is the best angle where we can get the maximum change in shear strain. So, whether it can be at size 0, whether it can be at this or whether it can be at this. Because this is the uh, relation the, on which this uh, entire is depending that is equivalent strain is given by this and again uh, angle of intersection and outer arc angle both are coming. So, we can say the equivalent strain is a function of that just now I told you about this uh, angle of intersection and the other that is uh, arc angle. One more process that can be done in this ECAP is we can follow number of roots because we have to make sure that the grain refinement is uniform. If we are again putting again and again in the same direction like head and tail then again head and tail again head and tail 
So, but again in that cases what is uh, what is being shown in the results is that we are not getting a uniform microstructure. So, for to make it sure what, what we can do we can follow different number of routes that is just changing the orientation of the billet that is coming out and again changing the orientation then again it is putting it side. This is one more variable that is in E cap. So, this is the experimentation dies that we have uh, doing at DI. This is the set these are the samples that we are getting out of it. And this is a very small concept that I have shown through a plas uh, plasticine. Just to convince you because uh, in this we cannot see the microstructure by these naked eyes. But here I just just to show the concept how this shear of metal is taking place. Just I have taken a plasticine, this was first pass, then again it was post, again we are getting more shear stress, then again in the third pass, then in the fourth pass this concept was shown just by through a plasticine, okay. So just, uh, just now I told you that my research area falls under what should be the best possible process parameters by which we can get maximum equivalent strain. So, we have tried number of options, these are FE simulation results for number of dies, for number of velocities, for number of frictions, okay, these are the forging force requirements that are we, get, we are getting, these are the results that we got, we are obtained because we are in the process, because uh, I just want like to add one, uh, one thing over here, among these SPD, SPD processes, none of the process is commercialized till date, none of the process is commercialized till this among the for grain refinement, for grain refinement. And I told you about there are number of SPD processes are there, RCS, uh, that's HPT, then this E cap, then accumulated roll, bond, uh, roll bonding. Among all these process, E cap has got potential for uh, commercialization. The reason is that because in that we can put a bigger size of billet, in RCS we can put only sheet, in HPT we can put a very small sample only but in this we can go for a commercialization. These are the results that I have taken from Wellup just to convince you that this was the original specimen of copper, yield stress of 80. After E cap 2 passes, the we are able to get yield stress 3, uh, 320 mega Pascals. then after 16 passes this and after 16 passes this. This was 14 and this was, uh, this was uh, without back pressure and this is with back pressure. So again, as we, our main aim of the research is to commercialize this process, okay. Because again and again we are putting 10 mm, 20 mm and if we are again repeating 16 passes, 20 passes, what is going to happen? It will be very much time consuming. So if we can redesign this e -cap process, that in one go we can achieve higher strain rate. Because in this case we will get some strain rate 1.15, then again we have to pass it, then again we have to pass it. So why can't we design some kind of process in which in one pass only we can get a strain of 3.45. So whether this is best, this is best or which one is best. These are the some proposed designs that we have discussed. So I will show it here that 2 ton ECAP that uh, we have tried this and this has not been reported. So this is the FEM simulation for ECAP 2 ton. This is a concept because in the normal ECAP only one pass is given again in this. In a one through we are getting double, two passes we are getting again. But the problem is this, in the billet get fixed, for getting it out what we have to do, we have to put one more billet then this the first one will come out. Again we have tried because till now the angles that has been proposed even in the literature are this or this or this 105, 130, 140, 150 like this. But again now recently we have just designed this one more. Why can't we have this kind of? And really we have got a very good results for this. We have taken a 65 degree and this is a pass one result. We are able to achieve 2.1 equivalent strain. This, this is for pass two. We achieved 3.7. In pass three, we achieved 5.5 .5 for this. In pass 4, we are able to achieve 7.5 strain in this and this is not being reported till now. One more, uh, this is the 4 passes, uh, uh, 
complete result for four passes for the 65 degree. First pass 2.1 that's just it's a repetition at one place. Then second pass is there. 3.7 and the fourth one and then the next. We are getting four passes in this diagram. One more option that we have tried is why can't we have this kind of design? That's a uh, U kind of die, but again it has got some problems in commerciality that we are facing it. That is again the bullet gets stuck inside again. But in this we are again we are able to obtain very high amount of equivalent strain. So in this again we have taken uh, two kinds of this. I'll just refer it that at one place we have given the chamfer. In the other we have given a curve. And again we have seen that equivalent strain is affected by this small parameter also. So we are able to get very good results in this, but again we are facing because in this case what is happening, huge amount of force is required, huge amount of the energy requirement is high and the second thing is that the billet is getting stuck it inside. So for that to bring it out, we have to put again one more that it comes out, then it comes out. So this is the second option that we have tried, the, uh, this is with the uh, earlier one was with chamfer and this one is with uh, fillet. I'll just show you one pass. This is one more uh, we have tried is this we have used rectangular bullet because in the literature uh, we have seen only square bullets or circular bullets and this effect has also been studied here for rectangular billet. So in this case also we are getting higher amount of strain but uh, all the passes are not being attempted till now. This is one more, this is enhanced version of two ton, we have given a four tons, five tons. And this has got, because what I told you just now, none of the SPD process is commercialized. So for commercialization, what has to be done that we have to make some, we have to basically increase the efficiency of the process, basically efficiency of the process, how fast we can get the product. So just to reduce the number of passes, because that microstructure refinement is depending on number of passes. In industry, you, what you can, you cannot expect that again and again, again you are doing repeating the same process. So again, this is one more complicated die and we are getting this die fabricated. So because uh, through simulation we have uh, uh, arrived some uh, good results. But in this case, uh, one more problem that we are facing is this. Because at these turns, the cross section is more than the, at the normal. So the next bullet that is required is of higher length. This is a, till now what I was saying that was only two dimensional die. And this is again a, this is a three dimensional variant that I am showing. Because we have given in three dimensions. like to overcome that problem of stacking. So what we have got this, uh, the commercialization is very difficult for this because we require four pressing things. So what we have shown, this was a single turn, three turns. Now again, what the recently that what we have proposed just to uh, avoid that problem of stacking, we have provided four plungers. I will make it clear in the next one. So we have provided plungers at three places. Now the second plunger comes into force, then the third will come into force then this fourth will come into the force. So just to overcome that problem of stacking, but commercialization of this is quite tough because we require four prime movers. This is the finally it comes out.
So, these are the results that I have just uh, discussed ki what is the effect of different uh, angle of intersection, angle of <coughs> uh, outer arc angle. So, for various velocities, for various uh, frictions, this is what. Yeah. Now, this is the total novel idea that we are proposing is because up till now whatever I have shown again that is a discrete process, it is not a continuous process. Discretism in sense that we will get one billet only at a time. Then again we have to feed other billet, then again we have to feed third billet. But again that also creates a problem in high production rate. So, this is the more recent idea that we have proposed is if we can have a continuous feeding in ECAB. So, this will be the ECAB die, this will be the rollers and they will be we will be feeding the continuous bars through these rollers. So, this video is quite time consuming, it is very high because feeding it very slowly, slowly. Then it will come inside and it will take a turn over here. So, this is the recent idea that we are putting just for the sake of not for the concept of microscope, but the sake of the commercialization of the process. Because the that remains same, that whole patch problem remains same, but just to you have to enhance the commerciality of this process. So, this is just to convince you all that how this field is coming up because in outer circle what is that bottom up approaches are getting more popularized, but these top down approaches for getting nanomaterials, bulk nanomaterials is also getting a very good prominence and this can be shown by number of conferences, number of committees and number of the proceedings. You see and this is the recent the conference that has been happening on nanomaterials by Sugar Plus Sugar Foundation. Okay. So, the conclusion is this, conclusions are a new discipline of metal forming technology is being born because in the beginning of the lecture I told you it is a merging of manufacturing process and metal fabrication for getting reducing the nano scale size for devices of course any material. This is the usefulness of FE analysis developing practical ECAP process demonstrated in the talk. A dominant explanatory process is ECAP in terms of deformation. ECAP refines grain structure without changing the blade dimension this is the beauty of this process because the billet can be used for production of anything. It can be a fastener, it can be medical implants or it can be anywhere in aero structures. ECAP can reduce grain size to sub micro range even nanometer range depends on number of parameters that I of course uh, asterisk. Grain refine depends on angle of dies and rotation of billets along with strain. Strength of material increased with each pass, large equivalent strain is achieved in modified E caps, modified E caps that I have shown you 65 degrees, 2 tons, 3 tons, 4 tons, there we are achieving high equivalent strain and continuous process are most likely to find practical application that last one that I have shown. Thank you sir.